difference of these two Brahms concertos, it couldn't be greater. And uh, I think the, the D minor is, is a titanic work. I think it's, uh, it's the work where his genius is the most uh, obvious. It's like, like a volcano. But the B flat concerto, many, many years, decades later, uh, is the work of a, of a mature person, a wonderful composer who no longer has to fight because at the time of the D minor concerto, he had to prove himself. The D minor concerto is his visiting card, also as a piano virtuoso. And, and with, with that, he, he wanted to, to gain entry into the musical world. This entry had been denied at that time. When he writes the B-flat concerto, he has arrived. Uh, he still had his enemies, who doesn't, in Vienna and elsewhere. Who, yeah, there, there, was, there were the Wagnerians, so there were the, the people who, who adored Wagner and uh, wouldn't recognize anything, anything else. And there couldn't be a greater difference than between Brahms and Wagner. Um, but there was the recognition of Robert Schumann and later Clara Schumann and of Josef Joachim and uh, Hans von Bülow later when he changed from a, a Wagnerian be, becoming a, a champion of Brahms and the great interpreter of Brahms. So here again, the model of Beethoven. There are two concertos that we have to look at here. The, the fourth, the G major, you know. So the piano starts alone, out of silence, out of nothing, magical opening. Uh, the Brahms concerto, again, how does he try to recall Beethoven and still do something completely new? He starts in... But it's not played by the piano, it, it's played by the horn. And this sets the tone for, for this movement. Again, the horn, the forest, like walking in a forest. And then let's recall Beethoven's so-called Emperor Concerto, which the orchestra starts with a big E-flat major chord. And uh, Beethoven is revolutionary here because usually a cadenza is at the end of the first movement. And in Beethoven's Emperor Concerto, the cadenza is right at the very beginning in the second bar. And so Brahms combines this, you know, beginning with the solo instrument from the fourth concerto and uh, putting the cadenza here. The cadenza at the beginning of the mo movement. So these are the, these two features. Otherwise, the second B flat major concerto is a very classical concerto in sonata form, very strict sonata form, following the Mozartian 
and the Beethovenian principle. But there is again a, a big difference because up to here, all piano concertos were usually in three movements. Sonata form, slow movement, and the final rondo. And here, Brahms breaks with this tradition and makes a four movement concerto. Uh, the second movement is a symphonic scherzo. <laughs> Which model is he following here? And this is harder to guess. The, and the model is Chopin. Chopin wrote four scherzi, and they are all in four bar periods. Always four bars, four bars, four bars. And so Brahms follows that pattern in this second movement. Now, the mood changes. If I can say that the first two movements of this concerto are symphonic and very orchestral, so the piano is like a main protagonist, but integrated into the orchestral structure. A symphony with piano obbligato. Let's, let's call it like that. But now, the, the third and the fourth movements are chamber music. So the character changes. And again, as in the first movement, we had this horn solo. Now we have a cello solo. This is one of the most beautiful pieces of Brahms. Uh, the cello in, in a solo position, but accompanied by the other strings, muted, very far away, and also certain wind instruments, the oboe, the bassoon, complementing this cello. And later, when the piano enters, And now the piano starts to sing. Uh, and it becomes a, a wonderful dialogue between the piano and the cello. Uh, and the finale is often criticized by people like I couldn't disagree more with them because I love this finale. It's again, uh, let's look back at Beethoven's fourth concerto, which was like this. And the last movement in Beethoven's starts. So the concerto is in G major, and it's, it starts in the wrong key, on the subdominant. And so Brahms' concerto is... And the last movement... So, um, also starts on the subdominant. Where is the model Beethoven Fourth Concerto? But it's not not obvious. So Brahms is a very clever man. 
very intelligent. And um, in this last movement, because it was premiered, the second concerto was premiered in my na native city, Budapest. So there is... Um, is incredibly Hungarian. <laughs> I'm Hungarian in, a, in the gypsy style. When Brahms went to Budapest with, with Remini or with Joachim, then they would go to a restaurant and then, then the gypsy band would come to their table and would play a song, something similar to this. So it has this Hungarian flavor. <laughs> 